women are just gold diggers. Without you, I was lost. I was in a dark room, and now that I found you, I got my cat back. I'm a like with Lockers, and the reason I like his name is Tom Like Us. I have four teenage boys, and I make them listen to you every day religiously, and they are following your guidelines. I've been following your stuff, Tom. Well, you're following my stuff. You're looking for poo. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) 10-4. I don't care if the women have orgasms. What I care about is, at the same time they're having a hard time having an orgasm, they start saying things like, I don't know if I want to do that. It's okay. demeaning the women, and I think you're trying to uh, okay. you're trying to use me and demean me. <laughs> okay. okay. Shut up, sweetheart. <laughs> Just keep your mouth full there, darling. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're better off leasing than owning. Right. You know, yep. you go fishing, you, you, you catch one, you throw it back. So I guess as the saying goes, if it floats, flies, or messes around, better to rent it. Or bleeds every 28 days. <laughs> Can't trust something that doesn't die after it bleeds, right? That's right. Exactly. Coming to work today, it took me a while to get out of my car. Not because I was listening to Kay White, waiting for the latest Tom Petty song to end, no. By the way, did you see they chose call letters for that station? They finally chose the call letters. K-L-A-N is going to be the call letters. K-L-A-N? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You think, what does that stand for? K-L-A-N. If you had a station called K-White, K-L-A-N would be a good set of callers. I, I think that's brilliant. When I go out with a chick, man, they want to go out and they expect these big elaborate dinners and all this stuff. You know what I do? You say your $40 rule. I got the $1 rule. I don't pay for nothing. <laughs> I don't pay for nothing. You have told all the men that it's okay to beat their women because you know. When did I say that? I don't know when you said it, but my oh, husband when he beats me. Oh, I- your husband beats you. Is that is that right? Yeah. Your husband beats you. So let me understand. He knocked you up and he beats you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But why are you having uh, kids with somebody who beats you? Um, he doesn't beat me all the time. And oh, because he doesn't beat you all the time. He only beats you occasionally. Praying is a waste of time. I mean, people are better off praying to me. With well, maybe they should. In fact, I command everybody in front of your radios, everybody, get on your knees and beg my forgiveness. Now, as your highest authority you'll ever reach, my next command is as follows. Everybody on the freeway, make a left turn right now, wherever you are. Hang on a second, Tiffany. This is Bert. Bert, what do you want to say to Tiffany here? How old are you, uh, Tiffany? 20. 20. So you yeah. don't really know anything about anything. You will find someone else. You'll drop what you got and go with it. Go with what? Whatever you find. <laughs> Whose dog is that barking in the background, by the way? <laughs> Oh, that's Lino. He barks at every little bitch that comes around. <laughs> From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, uh, it's just possible, man. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted Felon? No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 TA. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on what here in Southern California is a perfect. Friday. Perfect. Perfect. Flash Friday is coming soon. I can almost taste it. 
starts in about three weeks, and we will announce the exact date. And next week, we'll announce the exact date so you can prepare for Flash Friday. We haven't forgotten Flash Friday, but uh, this year the government went crazy, and they put daylight savings time back into, what, February or something like that? Okay, ridiculous. So we... Uh, we have decided to uh, define the season ourselves. It'll go from after Memorial Day up through Labor Day. That'll be our deal this year. It's going to count. Every week is going to count. And this summer, I'm going to be here every week of the summer. Every week. No reruns, no fill-ins, no nothing. So Flash Friday, we really mean it this year. It's coming up in a few weeks. But uh, a perfect, perfect Friday. Last weekend, everybody in Southern California was sizzling. I mean, there were skulls that literally fried right off people's heads. I mean, they just, they lost the top of their head. People sitting at Dodger Stadium last Sunday, uh, you could just see there was a big red ring and just suddenly opened like a lid on a can of corn. Unbelievable. But uh, today, a perfect day, a beautiful day, a wonderful day. Good day to be in traffic listening to the Tom Likas show. Good day to be anywhere. Tell you what. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Some of the things we talked about on the show this week. We talked about uh, speculation that the lousy economy is driving up the divorce rate. People are splitting up in much higher numbers than in recent years. Could it be that so many people are being foreclosed upon, so many people are in debt, so many people are going bankrupt, so many people are arguing about money? Could that be the reason? We talked to people who have had just that happen to them. Uh, We uh, talked about an article called, Do You Mommy Your Husband? Do you remember that? About chicks who, you know, cut up your meat for you and (laughs) put the toothpaste on the toothbrush for you. Remember that? We talked about that. What about that nut, that moron, that uh, insane person who held a prey-in at a San Francisco gas station and at other locations asking God to lower gasoline prices? And if you've been to the gas station in the last few days, God has essentially flipped you all the bird. (laughs) Last night, I paid the highest I ever paid for a regular unleaded. I'm sorry, yeah, special unleaded. I paid 421 a gallon. And that was at an Arco station. Pumped my own gas, 421 a gallon. And it was the first time I went to $86 to fill my tank. 86 bucks. And I don't drive a truck either. Wow. We talked this week also about a survey out of Germany that seems to say that the smarter a woman is, the worse her sex life. In other words, she's less satisfied with sex the smarter she is. Uh, Essentially proving what I've always believed. You know, bang the receptionist. Uh, You know, bang the... uh, you know, the daughter of your gardener, bang somebody who is, uh, you know, of course, over 18, but just dumb as a post. If you want to have the best night in the sack, smart chicks can't shut up. And they can't stop overanalyzing every move you make and everything you're doing. Yikes. We talked about that loon in New York, Trisha Walsh hyphen Smith. Released a second YouTube video. By the way, that's still on our MySpace page, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. It's still there. You can see it. She's uh, completely, in my view, just gone, gone, gone loony. But see it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Also on our MySpace page, by the way, MySpace page is myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. There's John Elway carrying his testicles in a large gold lame purse at the uh, Lakers Nuggets playoff game this week. Get a look at that. <laughs> a lot of comments about that on our MySpace page, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. And um, we talked about an email we received, but we talked about how 
a, a listener, a male listener, believed that most women enjoy talking about doing things with their friends more than the actual acts they're talking about. For example, when a woman says, I want to go to an expensive, trendy restaurant, what she's really saying is, I want to go to a restaurant with you so I can tell my friends I got you to take me. <laughs> it's more important than actually eating at the restaurant, tasting the food, or having the experience. It's being able to lord it over her friends. Uh, we had a conversation about whether that's the case or not. We can talk about any and all of that if you like. We can talk about anything we did not get into this week. We're all sick of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton enough already. Can we move Election Day up to June and be done with it? We're all fed up. There's nothing left to say. Doesn't matter. Uh, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. You won't even get to the air because our uh, resident Dago, Dean J. D'Amelio, the J is for Giovanni, I believe. Or is it Giuseppe? Well, anyway, Jimmy. <laughs> anyway, he will keep you from even getting on the air because he's that kind of telephonic expert. So he will uh, figure out, he will suss you out in 30 seconds or less, and then uh, you either get in or you don't. All you have to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. As you know, the Tom Lycus show is heard around the world uh, on the Internet. A live online stream is available, and we have people in many, many countries who've tried to call in or who have called in. Many of them find out that our 1-800 number does not work outside of uh, the United States. So if that number doesn't work for you, if you're in another country or someplace where the 800 number doesn't work, uh, we have an international line you can call. The country code is 1. Are you writing this down? The country code is 1. The area code is 323. And the telephone number is 520-6211. I'll give you that whole package again here. It's 1-323-520-6211. That's it. And that will get you on the air. We are off to a flying start this hour. Let's see where we can take this. 1-800-5800-1-800-5800-866. You really do not like women, do you? I love women, as long as uh, their breasts are in my face. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Okay. Let's go to your calls. Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, brother? Not much. Doing my show. What can I do for you? First of all, I want to say you're a G, man. I think your whole show is gangster, brother. Love that. Hey, check this out. First of all, I want to get into, um, uh, you're breaking up a little bit, so if you don't hear me, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to. No, no, no. Anyway. You're breaking up a little bit. It's your phone. I'm not on a phone. That's Tom. What's up, baby? Okay, check it out. Okay, first of all, these people who call in complaining about, you know, your show, if you do this, it could be a little better. I mean, I, I totally agree with what you're saying because, you know, I'm self-employed and I'm always helping people out, taking them with me to work. And the first thing that comes out of their mouth, if you do this, your job will be better. If you do this, you know, so, you know, you can get more money. And all along, I'm thinking in the back of my head, well, then why aren't you doing your own thing, you know? So when people call you and tell you that, I totally understand, man. They they just need to just hang up, bro. Yeah, you know? well, I, yeah. have you noticed how many women are like that? They, they're so good at telling you what to do. How many of them have successful businesses? Hey, bro, but, you know, it's not necessarily just, I mean, women, yeah, but I'm talking about, you know, just anybody in general. You know, everybody's always got to Hey, 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 watch your mouth. We're on the air. My bad, my bad. But, hey, Tom, you know what? Just, you know, do your thing and keep it real, and you always have me there. Well, good. And uh, um, if I wish I wasn't breaking up, man. I would like to, you know, argue with somebody, but I'd probably break up. <laughs> You probably would. So uh, good luck. Get a new cell phone, I'd say. Uh, Jennifer on the Tom Hello. Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Uh, nice talking to you. It's a first-time caller. Sure it is. Um, well, I wanted to ask you, if you had a daughter um, or a sister, would you still feel the same way and tell men to use them and use them um, 
for just sex? Would you? Well, I have two okay sisters. With that? I okay. have two sisters, and uh, uh, you know, I tell men the same thing regardless. Really? By the way, men do that anyway. They're not getting that idea from me. Well, you you preach to people about that to tell them, hey, you know, um, use them and don't spend any any, mo- any money on them. It's kind of like you know, use them and special. lose them. Yeah. Use them and lose them. And yeah. You're, but if you had, okay, so it's okay if you're your two sisters. Um, if men were treating them that way, you'd be okay with that? It's not my problem. Okay. And what about your, if you had a daughter? Uh, I don't have a daughter. Usually I have somebody else's daughter. And, okay, but still, if you can imagine, if you had one, would no, you? No, I can't. No, you can't? No. Okay, but what I'm saying is true. Person- if I had a daughter, it wouldn't be any less true than it is today. Oh, well, I don't think so because I've known a lot of men who were players and then they had a daughter and then they totally changed their view. They don't treat women. I don't care that they change their views. The, the truth would still be the truth, even if they change their views. Okay, well, yeah, that's your truth, but I would be interested. It's the to hear truth any, for most men. I would be- I would be interested Don't to Don't you start uh, telling me. No, no. You know what? You're not the host of the show. Don't say I'd be interested to hear. You're not going to set the agenda for the program. Okay? All I'm going to tell you is that men. Can I challenge men, callers? Can no, I challenge no. Callers? That's my job. That's my job, not your job. Well, not your job. That's not fair. So, no, well, get a show. Get your own show and make your own rules. Well, if there were any. Yeah, it is not your job I'd... to set up challenges on this show. I'm not setting up challenges. I'm yes, saying, yes, that is I what. Would. No, but I'm not. I'm not going to let you do it. Do you hear what I'm saying? You do not can proceed with this line of commentary because I'm not going to let you do what you're trying to do. Not going to happen. Got it? Is the uh, not- uh no? I again until you confirm to me that you're not going to issue a challenge to anyone. I'm not going to let you continue with the conversation. Do you just, understand? Do you I'm understand? not challenging. Good. And you're not challenging, offering uh, a suggestion? No. I, we do not need you telling people what to call in about. Is it because you're afraid of what It's always because I'm the host of the show and I run things here, not you. So it's your point of view. Yes, and, it is. It's the and, Tom Likish show. It's not the Jennifer show or the anybody else show. How about an open-minded show? Is no, no, well, I'll tell you what. You, you, I'll tell you what. Why don't you call NPR, okay? Because then they all understand everybody. They feel everybody's pain. They understand everybody's point of view. This is the Tom Likas show. On the Tom Likas show, Tom Likas expresses his point of view and then argues with people about his point of view. But Tom Likas does not let callers change or set the topic for the program. That's my job, not yours. Yeah, but this is um, your Friday show where you... It like, doesn't matter. I, I, I said you can call in about any topic. I didn't say that yeah. you can tell other people what to call about. Okay, well, I, and I got my can't. point across. And no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No, you did. didn't. No, yeah, you, you didn't. Did. Everybody who listens to this show knows who makes the rules on this program, except you. Well, I got another point across, a different point. And no, so you didn't get any point, point across. across. Everybody already knows that I set the agenda on this program, not the caller. And I, I had this conversation with countless ball-busting bitches like yourself who think you're going to drive the bus. You're not. I drive the bus. You're very wrong about calling me that. Cause oh, yeah. No, no. Because I know curse, exactly I know calling, exactly what you are. And, and I'm not I cursing. I you. You disrespected me. I'm telling the truth. Everybody listening knows you're a ball-busting true. bitch. Everybody, everybody knows listening knows it. Truth. Yes, it is. And you disrespected me. I didn't disrespect you. I didn't lower myself to your level. I didn't lower myself to your level because... You know, what's amazing about you is you remind me of all the good reasons I live alone because this is exactly what I don't want to hear in my home. Still there, sweetheart? Guess not. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Chris. Now, Jennifer's not here, Chris, but what did you want to say here? Well, Tom, I wanted to say I've got two sisters and I've got a daughter. I'm kind of the anti-listener, if you know what I mean. All right? Um, yeah. I have kids. I'm married. I've called you before. We talked a little bit. Um... My whole thing is my job is to make my daughter smart enough 
not to be, not to fall into the traps, if you will. Both my sisters are smart enough not to become, you know what, dumpsters. <laughs> right. Not to be used and abused. They're not stupid like 90% of the women that call this show. <laughs> like the last caller. Exactly. If you're dumb enough to get used and abused by a guy, by you, by me, by any of the callers, any of the guys that listen to Like It's 101, you deserve what you got. That's exactly right. It's your parents' job to teach you what to be on the lookout for. And what you said about not spending money on girls, why do you want to be a gold digger in the first place? <laughs> if you... If you're happy, if you want to be with the guy to be with the guy, you shouldn't care if he spends 40 bucks or 400 bucks. Absolutely if, right, Chris. If all you want is to dig in the man's pockets and see what he's all about, you know what it's like, Tom. You go to the bar, the first question out of her mouth is, what's your name? The second question is, what do you do? That's right. And when you run into those kinds of chicks, they deserve the freaking McDonald's trip, okay? They deserve the $40 rule because that's what they earn. You're absolutely right. In my opinion, you catch the kind of fish based on the kind of bait that you use. And if you're throwing out money, you're going to catch a gold digger. If you're throwing out love and you're trying to meet somebody who's real, you'll find somebody who's real. Fish is somehow an appropriate analogy. Well, that's just my opinion, man. And, I mean, I, I like to think that I, I, I'm, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but when I hear these girls call and they want to try to change your mind and they want to try to change the way a guy thinks, listen, we're born – Taught, raised, we want to have as much sex as possible, as often as possible. And if you're dumb enough to let me hit it for a filet of fish, I'm going to hit it. 1-800-5-800-TOM <laughs> is our telephone number. Now, our next caller, uh, she called just one week ago, and we don't normally let people on after one week. But apparently there's been an update in her life. So, Danielle, before you get to the new development in your life, Remind everybody what we talked about one week ago. Hey, Tom. Um, well, I basically called in because I had been dating this um, much younger guy who's in the Navy, and I found out that he was my spacing his girlfriend on my iPhone. So um, naturally I wanted to get in touch with her and tell her. So that was the premise, and I wanted your opinion. And, you know, I knew kind of what you were going to say, so I think I didn't want to hear it, but I needed to hear it, so that's probably why I called. So anyways, um, the update is I got to think about what you told me that night. You know, I wasn't going to marry the guy, so it's not like, you know, he's cheating on me that way. And the girlfriend is not my best friend. She's not my sister, cousin, relative, something like that. Don't have, like, the communicable disease she needs to know about or you know, whatever. So basically you said to get back the best revenge is to live your life well. Well, the next day I got rid of all his pictures on my MySpace, on my camera phone, and just let it go, and I felt a ton better. Like you said, I better things to do with my life and just let it go, and whatever happens, happens, and the best revenge is to live your life well. And I got plenty of things to do with my life, and I'm having a good time right now, so... You would never have gotten any satisfaction doing the things you were proposing to do. No, you're right, because it was stressful. And the second I stopped trying to pursue that course, the stress went away, and I'm having a great time. So I know that uh, I don't need to get revenge on anybody. Let me give you an example having nothing to do with girlfriends or women I've dated or whatever. People I've worked with. People who told me I was no good anymore. Like Al Brady Law, a program director who once told me that I wasn't as good as I used to be. By the way, he told me this in 1996. <laughs> and he told me that I would never succeed in L.A. <laughs> now, Al, I don't know if he's working for a radio station, but I've got the number one afternoon show in Los Angeles. <laughs> now, now I, I never had to put sugar in Al's gas tank or make calls to his house at 3 in the morning and order him 10 pizzas or sign them up to Time, Newsweek, and TV Guide. I never had to, uh, uh, you know, uh, go on the air and uh, say false things about him or threaten him or hire somebody to threaten him. I never had to do anything. The best revenge I could ever get is I'm sitting here making a seven-figure income with the number one show in the biggest revenue radio market in America while Al is out there among the flotsam and jetsam of, of former radio people. Right. 
No, you're what, right. what could be more satisfying than that? Right. No, you're right. So what you do is you use these opportunities. Uh, and by the way, if your life isn't as good as mine, this is your inspiration. Because the way you're going to get back at people is to make your life so good nobody can hurt you. You're right. And I love listening to your financial advice, too. Actually, last month was a really good month for me because I, I'm, like, not going to live beyond my means. I'm going to pay off bills that have interest to them, and I'm listening to what you say. And last month was really good because of it. So, By the way, the yeah. first time I, the ratings came out and I was number one in L.A., I sent Al Brady Law 46-page fax with all of the ratings right to his office, which, by the way, was no longer at a radio station at that point. I wanted him to sing. Right. And uh, there you go. I, I Had I put sugar in his gas tank, I would not feel better than I feel today. Right. No, you're right. I just, um, one thing that I, I, I read a blog that someone had written about my, um, my call to you a week ago. And they said I was so stupid and I was a hater and they hate haters and wanted to slap me, which is kind of funny, <laughs> hypocritical. But I thought about it and I said, you know what, if anyone out there, if there's one person that was listening and was feeling the same way I was feeling, and if they got help, well, I'm happy to be the idiot then. <laughs> Good for you. So you see, you are seeing the benefits of living that kind of life. And thank you very much, and I might see you Monday, and if you could take me out with a bong hit, I'd be happy. I certainly will. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-86-SEARCH. Yo, amigo. Come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camacho's in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likes Show. Now! Yes, it's the Tom Likas Show, coming to you from a secret location. We can't say. We can't tell you about it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Monday, we will not be in the studio at all. Monday is May 5th. Or for you morons who keep asking, Cinco de Mayo. And we will be doing what we do every year around Cinco de Mayo, except this year it's on Cinco de Mayo. And that is the biggest, wildest live listener party we do all year long. Uh, if you haven't left work yet, time to ask your boss for Monday off or just plan on calling in sick Monday. Because we don't do a lot of live appearances anymore. My, my opinion about doing the live appearances is we want them to be special. And I imposed upon everybody my view that... Uh, it's stupid to be to be doing live appearances every two weeks because uh, after a while they just lose that special quality about them. This is a special broadcast, and we only do it on Cinco de Mayo at Camacho's every year. Now, we do other broadcasts. This one is the wildest. I recommend you bring broads, bring bail money, <laughs> because anything can happen at a Tom Likas broadcast. It's at Camacho's in the City of Industry this Monday. The doors open around 2 o'clock. We have a sound check first, so whenever the sound check is done, uh, they open the doors, they let you in like cattle, and then uh, between 3 and, well, at least 7, uh, we will have our wildest live broadcast of the year. Now, to get to Camacho's, you take the 60 freeway to the Crossroads Parkway exit, and uh, Camacho's is on the south side of the 60 freeway. It's that simple. If you need details or directions to Camacho's, call them right now. Here's the number, 562-695-5777. That's 562-695-5777. And we will see you Monday for Cinco de Mayo at Camacho's, like we do every year. Wide open telephones here, 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Bryce on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. Great. Uh, I wanted to know if you heard anything about what took place in Reno, Nevada on the uh, 26th of April here uh, at the uh, Republican State Convention that they had. I did not, because ever since it's been obvious that John McCain is the nominee, I've stopped paying attention, to be right, honest. Right, right. Well, 
my 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 issue is is this that uh, uh, obviously I don't feel that Ron Paul is going to to win the presidency. I mean, it's pretty pretty apparent. But well, I it, said that a, I said that a year ago, but nobody would right. listen. <laughs> the the thing is, is he is still a candidate, and during during this convention, the purpose of this convention was to uh, elect delegates from each district to attend the national convention. And uh, they had the convention last Saturday, and uh, Ron Paul's people showed up, very organized. Uh, and uh, bottom line is what happened. Ron Paul ended up having the support of the state, and they actually quit counting the ballots. Uh, they shut down the convention. John McCain's people walked out, and they turned uh, they turned the lights and the microphones off on everyone else left inside of the uh, the casino that the convention was held at. And well, I'm glad to know that it's not just uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama who are doing stupid things. <laughs> glad to hear the Republicans have their share of stupid things going on. <laughs> my 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 thing is this though: is that uh, uh, it's uh, it seems like it, the the media. This is something that, that obviously should have been reported. I mean, every single little issue that that Obama and Hillary have with each other. Is well, it was reported. It was reported because you know about it. Uh, I, I know about it because my parents are delegates for Ron Paul. It was reported in the Reno Gazette Journal, uh, and that's the only newspaper that carried any story about it. Where else is it relevant? Uh, excuse me. Where else but in Nevada is it relevant? Is is Ron Paul relevant? Well, there, there's. Uh, well, that story. Where, where, but in Nevada, was that story relevant? Well, it's it's relevant because uh, you hear every uh, you know every week about different uh, uh, different primaries that are going on, different caucuses that have been going on. Yes, but that's and, you know why? Because we don't know who the nominee of the Democratic Party is going to be. Well, well, that's that's true, but we uh, know we know who the nominee of the Republican Party is going to be. Uh, yes, 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 we do. True. Yes, that's true. That's true. And I but, know you're but... you're one of those nutcases that supports Ron Paul, but <laughs> it's time to join the real world with the rest of us, son. Uh, Ron Paul never was going to win this. Never was going to get the nomination, and never will. Do you uh, do, do you are you aware of all of his uh, his views on things? And are there, it's, are there it's irrelevant. Is what his there? you see the fact that Ron Paul had been a big L libertarian at one time that pretty much uh, aces him out of any possibility of ever being the president of the United States. Right, right, and, and and like I said, I mean, I realize he is not going to be the president. My my thing is though, it seems like this is something that that the media has not covered, and and basically because nobody cares outside well, of the people in Nevada uh, who belong to the Nevada Republican Party. There, there are there are other people who who care too because Ron Paul had the had the majority vote in a few other states, and there there's currently no, he does position. not. No, Ron Paul did not have a majority in any state. Ever? Hey. <laughs> no, I don't know. If, if name you on, name the states. Uh, there, there's there's discrepancies in the voting. In uh, 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 name the states where Ron Paul was declared the winner. Uh, I was watching the news one day, and he was he was the winner of Louisiana. And the next thing I know, uh, it's being reported that who CNN declared Ron Paul to be the winner in Louisiana? I was, I was watching CNN when they so when they CNN were the declared that. I I I don't believe that's true. Ron Paul didn't come close in any state. Well, bottom line, I, I, I feel like uh, like we're, our candidate has been pushed at us. Uh, your candidate is, is another man in the your running. candidate gets the Ralph Nader, Reverend Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson Memorial Award for trying to f up the election. That's what he gets. He is never going to be the president. He's never going to come close to being the president, ever. And every election year, you have to have that one guy who satisfies gadflies like yourself. Uh, or who satisfies the outcasts or the people who, you know, who vote for Batman or Mickey Mouse, but instead they'll pick, you know, uh, Ross Perot or Ralph Nader or whoever. 
Now, you know what I'm saying is true. I know it hurts because this particular guy is the one that you support. But th every election year, we got one like that. Now, you can't say you didn't know he didn't have a prayer going in. You cannot well, be I, in that much denial. And that's, well, that's, I, I've, I've said that to you twice now that I agree. Yes, he, he didn't have a prayer to win it. But the, the, the he, he has been avoided by the media. Uh, in the first few, the first few debates, uh, Ron Paul actually won the first few Republican debates. Well, no, nobody won the debates because there's no way of declaring a winner in a debate. That was well, your they, opinion they, and he was your guy. Taken, they, there were polls shown that people felt that he had the, the best view. Uh, How many of them ever said they would vote for him? Uh, excuse me? How many of them ever said they would vote for him? Uh, I don't know. That, yeah, I that, don't know. yeah, you don't know because you don't have an electron microscope to find that number. <laughs> I mean, even if people like some of his points of view, libertarians are weirdos. As, as the great radio talk show host Alan Burke once said, libertarians are weirdos. The libertarians are like Mensa, okay? These are people who stand there and, and argue how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. They, the, they, argue, they argue about whether we should eliminate the post office, whether we should eliminate public education, whether we should eliminate uh, the prison system, uh, whether we should eliminate police departments. I mean, it, it, the stuff they debate is, is, is so off the bar graph. You know, you hear the Rush Limbaugh's of the world when he's not uh, picking up drugs in a Denny's parking lot. Uh, you hear these guys uh, on the air talking about how someone like Barack Obama is out of touch with the American people. Nobody is more out of touch with the American people than Ron Paul and anyone who's ever run for president on the libertarian ticket. Do you agree? You know it, and has I know. Too much control over the people. Uh, that what has too much control over the people? Do you agree that the government has too much control over over the? I I I do indeed. Do. Uh, but but by the same token, the Republican Party is not the way you're ever going to cure that problem. And to run for president uh, under the Republican Party banner is not the way to fix that because uh, the Republicans are the biggest spenders out there. You talk you want to talk about spending? Uh, you know they 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 call Democrats tax and spenders. Republicans are no tax. And spenders. <laughs> and you, you got to admit that the people in the Republican Party who you would have to count on to support your candidate, uh, they clearly support all the huge overspending that the Republicans have been doing the past eight years. Uh, I don't. I don't dispute that with the president that we have in office right now at all. No. But not it, the president didn't do it by himself. The president had a complicit Congress that, for most of his time in office, was Republican. Yes, I agree with you there. So, uh, you know, nobody in the Republican Party has any, any uh, integrity, any uh, cred credentials here when it comes to talking about smaller government. The Republican Party has lied about making government smaller now for 30 years, going back to the first days of Ronald Reagan running for president and losing back in the 70s. Uh, n nobody spends more money than the Republican Party. Nobody. Okay, Nobody well, has created a bigger government. <laughs> well, my, my purpose of calling was just uh, because this wasn't anything that, that uh, was reported in. It wasn't in reported papers. because nobody cares outside of Nevada. <laughs> there are plenty of stories that happen in Los Angeles that don't get reported outside of Los Angeles. I know, but when you're talking about something as big as the. Uh, it isn't big. The, John the, McCain's the nominee. Campaign. Case closed. <laughs> And by the way, I'm afraid, I hate I'm John afraid you're right. I'm afraid you're right. All right. So really, this story is is a tempest in a teapot. Isn't that what they used to call it? Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.